Hey, Marsha. Hey, Jess. Hi. Hey, Eliana. I think we're still waiting for Sasha, but might as well get ahead and get started um, since we only have an hour for this conversation um, with some introductions. So um, to our audience, hello, I am Marcia Donay. I'm the Capacity Building Director here at the Ballot Initiative Strategy Center. Um, and I'll turn over to, my, to the panelists, introduce themselves, and then um, I'll set some context and we'll get into the conversation. Eliana, you want to kick us off? Sure. Thank you, Marsha. Hi, everyone. I'm Eliana Ramirez Vaughn. I'm the Capacity Building Manager at BISC, and my pronouns are she, her, and I'm happy to be here with all with you all. <laughs> Go ahead, Hi, everyone. Jess. My name's Jess Grennan, pronouns she, her. I am with Simple Majority, and I'm a total ballot measure nerd. <laughs> Aren't we all? <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. Um, awesome. Well, uh, for folks who are joining us uh, to, you know, witness the brilliance that are our panelists today, um, hopefully you will have the opportunity to participate and watch some of the other panels that were happening um, th throughout today, um, where we've talked a lot about how you know the key considerations that you need for building a ballot measure campaign making a go no go decision collecting signatures launching the campaign and throughout all of that we really talked about what did it like how we work with consultants and vendors and our partners and our coalition to achieve our goals we've really been focusing on you know how do we build or that we need a team a strong team to be able to achieve these goals. And so today we're gonna get in this session into a little bit more about how do we build that team? Particularly, how do we identify uh, the right folks to bring onto the campaign um, and how we can work with them to achieve our goals? So that is, that is where this conversation is going to focus. Um, so, that um well we have jess you well we have you kick it off because sure. you've worked on so many ballot measure <laughs> campaigns at this point um can you just for the folks on this call who maybe have not done this before just share a little bit about how you've worked um with consultants and vendors and you know how you in your own way are a consultant um how you work with these campaigns and um and um how do you go about like determining like what roles you hire for how do you um think about that process yeah so i think when i'm starting off on a campaign there's definite okay. roles we all know we need um we're always going to need an in-state lawyer someone that understands like the rules and what we can and cannot do that is a you know that's not really debatable roles that we have that is that is one that you really want to have on on deck right away you also need to have your pollster on deck pretty pretty darn close to the law lawyers and pollsters generally brought on right around the same time on a ballot measure um and then it really varies place to place um and situation to situation sometimes you're working with a coalition that already has folks that can fulfill different um different different um, roles that you need filled on a ballot measure through coalition partners and other places. But you really wanna see what kind of campaign you need to run. If you're running a ballot measure where you have to collect signatures to, you know, if you're doing a citizen's initiative, you really have to have your paid signature on board pretty early on in the process. And I think this is, you know, these are some of the roles that are right away. Um, you're going to need to have a fundraiser unless, you know, you're one of those few measures that has all the money, but I, I don't know many of those. You're also going to have to have your communications from right away. You want to be thinking about how do we communicate about this ballot measure. You're going to want to have a digital firm, mail firm, and a TV firm. And all of these firms, you know, I really like putting my, I, I really consider it, my consulting team from the beginning and I 
I really want to have my TV firm who I um, get to work with, I want them looking at our messaging guidance or helping to draft that because they really understand how to talk about your ballot measure in a short, in short, I think we were hearing on the other call in 76 words or less. Um, <laughs> so I think it's really important that we bring in people and really using your team and treating them like consultants and not vendors, I think is really important. The difference between the two is I go to a vendor when I want a bumper sticker printed and a consultant is someone that they should be look at. You should be looking for firms that are willing to go beyond just their scope, that they're like weighing in, they're giving advice. They've been through this before. So if you're having a polling issue or you have a question or you're like, this just doesn't sound right, you have people to bounce this off, ideas off of. That's kind of the way I look at it. But every campaign is different in terms of what you need, what resources you have, what your opponents look like. So um, I've definitely done this more right and more wrong at times. Eliana, anything to add from your perspective on how to think about who, who you bring on to the campaign and um, that approach? Yes, totally. You, you know, as Jess said, um, consultants and vendors, there is a difference, but you do, they do bring that valuable expertise and that experience to the table that the coalition may not have. Um, so they can also be seen not just as the bumper sticker printer, but they're also can be a thought partner who can contribute to that achievement of your goals in the campaign. So it's like, it's really important to be asking the right questions of your vendors and consultants. Have they worked on a ballot measure campaign in this issue area? Have they worked in your state and how long? Um, have they worked on progressive or non-progressive issues? It's important to ask those questions and understand their values to see if they match with your coalitions and your campaign's values. But essentially they are your collaborative partners um, in this work, in this campaign, and should be seen as such. And in like, in, as in any collaborative relationship, there is a give and a take. And so there is something that you're taking from the consultants as well. And hopefully we can get into this later, putting that into your contracts to making sure that those skills stay in your state and campaign. Um, but yeah, that's what I had to add for that. Hi, Hi Sasha. Hi, Sasha. <laughs> Welcome. Hi, everyone. I'm so sorry. I'm so glad to be here with you all. Oh, we're ha glad to have you. Sasha, do you, you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? And um, we were just getting started and answering the, you know, an initial question of what are kind of, what are the things that you think about when um, thinking about like, which consultants to bring on to the campaign and how, you know, what you look for in those roles? Absolutely. Hi, everyone. Thank you uh, for convening. Thanks for creating some space uh, for me and for us. My name is Sasha Huja. I use the pronouns she and her. Um, I have the privilege of serving as campaign director for New Yorkers for Equal Rights, um, the ballot initiative committee that we filed last year here in New York to pass a comprehensive equal rights amendment, which will be appearing on the ballot this November. Um, this question is right on time. Uh, we are building our team here at home. Uh, in a state that is flush with consultants who do a lot of campaign <laughs> work. Um, many of the big firms are based here. Lots of folks have done work in New York, given the size of the electorate, the scale of our campaigns, and then in 2024 being a really critical year, uh, of course, for all the reasons that we know, uh, including here in my home state. Um, it is such a, a gift in so many ways to be able to build um, the team of our dreams in um, building this campaign. Um, we have just uh, brought on a couple of really fantastic folks um, to support our work. Um, and in the search process, um, there were a couple of things that we were paying really close attention to given um, our electorate here in New York, how we ho are hoping to communicate um, and really meet people where they are. Um, of course, um, there are some things in building the team that I was really keen to look for um, and balancing. So is the team 
nationally that has worked on many, many ballot measures, um, the right team for us in our state. Um, do those skills transfer? Does the New York experience matter more? Does the ballot measure experience matter more? Does some combination of the two? How do we actually build that? Um, the right level of folks. Uh, balancing that was challenging. Um, in creating a public RFP process, one that we reached very, very broadly um, to bring folks on, um, had a lot of response of folks who were very, very interested in our work, um, but then remaining disciplined and true to meeting the needs of a robust executive committee that has worked with organizations and consultants in lots of different capacities. I uh, found myself in a critical position to um, be a bridge to our leadership here at home while um, really honoring and making a case for, even if they were not readily, apparently, uh, the um, team on paper that seemed like they could do all the things, really being able to bridge and translate to our executive committee and make a strong case for the team that would reach uh, our diverse electorate. So excited to dig into this conversation with you all. Um, and thank you for allowing me to share some space. Yeah. No, Sasha, you just touched on something that I think is important to to dig into a little more and, you know, your experience and Jess's experience really lend lend themselves to this of like when you're looking at the breadth of consultants that you could bring on, um, some may be coming with more ballot measure experience, some may be coming with more issue experience, more constituent experience, and some may be having a lot of campaign experience but not worked on a ballot measure before. Like what are the unique aspects of the ballot measure that folks should be looking for in this hiring process um, for these consultants and vendors. Just because, you know, just because somebody has a lot of candidate campaign experience doesn't necessarily mean that they aren't able to translate that to the ballot measure, but that also doesn't mean that those are directly um, applicable. So can you can you both talk a little bit more about those nuances? Do you want me to start, Sasha? Um, so I think a couple of things just, and Sasha, I think how you've described your um, search process is really thoughtful and interesting. Um, I think some of the things that you're looking for when you're asking these questions is doing the balance. You're never gonna find someone who's done repro and you're never gonna find the exact match, right? Because every election cycle is different, every campaign is different. And sometimes it's helpful to have folks that haven't worked on the issue. Um, you know, and ha can come in with some, you know, not necessarily with pre-existing biases or thoughts. And a lot of times it's really helpful to have people who have a lot, a breadth of experience because you can be like, hey, that never works. We always try that, never works. You know, and so both are really helpful. And I think it's creating a team with balance, right? that you want to make sure that where you might have gaps as a campaign man, I have many gaps as a campaign manager. I, Sasha brought me on to talk to the New York crew, and I think I spent a good chunk saying, talking about the things I messed up previously, but um, I won't be asked back to New York after that one. But, you know, the list of things that you have strengths, your coalition has strengths with, and where those weaknesses also come in, and finding a consulting I really look at a consulting team as a complement to each other is that you want to make sure that you're covering your bases. And I think to get to a point of more diversity and inclusion with this, we can't just take the same old, same old experience as, you know, what we thought five years ago, what you absolutely need on ballot measure. People are going to come to this work with different levels of experience and skills, and it might not be they might not have worked on initiatives for seven years, or they might not have worked on campaigns, but they've done really amazing marketing on the COVID vaccine in Spanish speaking communities. And that might be something that you look at. I do think in order to have this more intentional hiring process, you need time and space to do this right. It means interviewing more firms that maybe didn't hit your checklist on the, on the proposals. It means, reaching out to broader audiences. Um, and I think it's also having a balance of bringing in folks who might be newer to the ballot measure space, but have really other very valuable experience and pairing them up with folks with more direct democracy and ballot measure space uh, experience to get there. But I also think you need to have the resources and time to do this right. And you're gonna interview a hell, hell of a lot more people than you thought <laughs> to get there. 
Yes, plus one to interviewing a lot of yeah. people. Um, also, these were some of the most important decisions that we're making. We are uh, not only adding capacity, my own capacity um, in the role that I'm holding, but so many of our organizations are leaning in in major, major ways. They're committing staff time, people, staff lines, um, and and being able to turn up the volume on all of that tremendous work. Um, we have the benefit of having so many um, organizations that are part of the team that we've built with that local knowledge, with that local experience, um, and having a vendor and consulting team on board who can really complement that, who can meet our folks that are, you know, managing three, four, 10 priorities at a time and still showing up for the ballot measure work in really, really critical ways. I'm talking to you on March 11th, uh, executive committee organizations here in New York are focused on the budget cycle, on petitioning to get candidates on the ballot, on um, a June primary, on uh, an, August, an April presidential primary, like many, many, many um, important things that we know are the plates of our teams are full. Our consulting team can help us, um, and I think through the interview process has been able to reveal, can really help us rapidly prioritize like in a way that we uh, really need to be focused to keep our eye on the ball, um, to meet our very, very busy, but also very talented and, uh, and folks with a ton of local credibility, like keep us on track um, while adding capacity, not replacing. Um, fundamentally, this is a major team effort. This is happening. Um, our work in New York is happening in a context where um, we're doing this work for the for the first time at scale, certainly in recent memory in our state, in a really high stakes election year. And so um, that's uh, no pressure, right? That is like um, something that we hope we can really set a model for, um, and we know we can do that with the really strong dynamic team that we built. So taking the time to go through those interviews uh, feels absolutely critical um, to make sure that we've left no stone unturned. And I would also just add to what Sasha said is having, having both a team that gets along and works well together, but also is not afraid of some, some good tension and to debate out issues and not just take things for granted. Um, I think that's really important that, you know, your consulting team might not always agree or share the same philosophy. Mm -hmm. They should have a similar true north. That's, that's always helpful. But I think having folks that maybe come at it different ways and also go in there with, they're not, it's not that they're worried about their stake of the work, their mail budget, their digital budget, TV budget. They're worried about the campaign winning and making sure that we we leave things better than we found it. I think that's really important, but it doesn't always mean that all of your meetings are going to be easy. No, not easy. I agree. I, something that we <laughs> always at BISC try to... Um, advise folks is you and your coalition, you have the experience, you have the brilliance, you have the expertise, and you were hired and brought together because you care about this issue and the people's lives it will impact in your state. So it's so you need to remember to not let your consultants and vendors like stream roll you and take over unless you've asked them to. But even if they have more experience than you in the particular um, consulting area, um, and especially if they come out of state, you need to, you know, set, put your foot down and, you know, you know your communities best. And that's how you can have that healthy tension, um, but also understand that at the end of the day, they do work for your coalition and you are in charge. I um, mean, you make the final decisions as a coalition. And so always remember that when working with consultants and vendors. You know, Jess, you touched on the the sharing of the true north. Like, how do you get into those conversations during the hiring process? How do you test um, that out? A lot of times I ask that question for folks, like, what is your true north? But I think also we have to look at what other clients they take. You know, and I think that's really important to look at other work that's been done. One of the questions I ask in proposals is send me a reference from a campaign you lost. And I think that helps get gets you to that point, right? Like of looking at their other work, knowing where they show up. No, and it's worth asking that on the on the interview too. Mm -hmm. Sasha, Eliana, any tips on that from what from your work? I love that question of the 
Well, it's great. I mean, us all humbling ourselves, I think, for a minute and reflecting on Jess did this very graciously with our New York team, as she referenced, um, being reminded of, um, the, yes, the question I asked, you know, the clients that people take tell you a lot about them um, and the kinds of victories that they're going to spend a lot, a lot of time focusing on. Um, that was hugely helpful. Um, really getting feedback in places where they get stuck. Um, us really understanding how teams, regardless of what their capacity has been, how they've navigated coalition dynamics that always are com complex by design. Like we are actually designing a complex thing. And so let's lean into that complexity and know that a lot of people want to weigh in on decisions. And um, a lot of folks want to be reminded of the process that it took to get to the recommendation that's in front of you and that we did our due diligence. Um, folks that are ready to roll with that, that actually respect that process is essential. Um, and um, who can um, push us also in directions that um, we may not be thinking about, not in a way that is um, conceding any ground, uh, but really to expand our own thinking beyond our four walls of you know reality and campaign work and communities that we serve um, to imagine what might be possible if we move in a particular direction. Might we expand our reach, meet communities in new and different ways, um, live our values in different ways. So that balance of trust and direction, um, but also vendors that are, are, are res deeply respectful and really honoring that coalition process, um, messy as sometimes it can be, is a really important. Yeah, it's all in the, as Sasha is doing very well and diligently is the interview process and taking the time and knowing that it takes time to find those consultants that, you know, that are not always the ones that are working on camp ballot measure campaigns. We need, you can diversify your consultant pool as well with that RFP process that is equitable and inclusive you know, for both the prospective consultants and the coalition as well. And so you're at the onset, you're defining how your values will manifest in the hiring process. So it goes into the RFP, it goes into the contract um, and the deliverables, and it's um, integrated throughout. Um, so making sure to have that on ramp and taking the time to do those RFPs and interview process is really essential. And I would also add to that one thing that I saw um, in hiring this year, two firms that um, they combined in their RFP process midway through. Um, and I do support, like, I do think that can be a really interesting way if you have one firm that has more outreach in the community, more experience that, and one firm with more ballot measure um experience like i think there's ways to do that in a way that's beneficial for both this election cycle and further down the road too yeah yeah and we've seen that in terms of like um even in like for BISC, when we hire consultants to do work with us particularly around research is we'll often ask folks in the process if you know what their relationship to other firms are, do they work in partnership? Like, what does that look like? Um, because just to talk about it, sometimes you get a better product in that way because folks are bringing different perspectives um, to, to the work. But again, it's just has been talked about, but with the same North Star. And I do think it is tempting to just want to travel with your team and the folks that you've worked with. And it, I've done it before. I will probably, you know, there are times you do it again. And it's sometimes, even as a campaign manager or consultant, you're not necessarily the first hire, which is very interesting. Um, and sometimes it works out great, but I think it's also, it's up to us to see what else is out there. Like I, I'm sitting through interviews right now and I'm like, oh, I had no idea these people did this work. So interesting. But, you know, it's also you know, you also have to cut it off at a point because otherwise you can be in 15 hours of meetings for first round interviews. <laughs> um, so it's definitely, it, it takes time, right? It takes time to do this. You know, it's, it's the right thing to do and you get a better product at the end. And also it's good for, I think it's good for a lot of consultants to know that they're being interviewed. Mm -hmm. um, because you can lay a lot of the direction of the campaign in the interview too. Agreed. 
So can we talk a little bit about decision making around hiring and then the onboarding process? Once you've made that decision, how do how do you bring folks along into into the campaign, especially just like you just mentioned, if they're not the first hire and some decisions have already been made? Um, we are going through this a little bit now. Um, constantly, in spite of the best, our best laid plans, we uh, build the plane and build the team while we're flying and while we're in motion. So that's that's okay. Um, I do think the investment early on as folks are coming on board to set a tone um, that is really oriented around learning, I think will help pay off. <laughs> we'll see, I'm testing this assumption right now, um, but will pay off long term. So um we brought on uh, a couple of teams just recently really wanted to integrate them um in as objective of a way as possible into all of the moving parts of the work kind of understanding the dynamics across the coalition really spending the time to understand our first cut at polling and research that we did earlier this year um yes i took an entire friday of folks time to like really really build with them and make sure they could ask any and all questions um, with the understanding that, that we can provide them with the steer, a really good solid place to start from. Like putting a bunch of meetings on people's calendars only gets you so far, but really creating the space for um, the online and offline spaces where we can connect, where we can learn together, where folks can ask questions, kind of understand the dynamics of all of the players at the table, how they relate to one another, some of their organizing history with one another across the coalition um, any reflections on the interview process that may be important for folks to know when they're coming in um, that feel like we can share, you know, in a way that helps in our relationship and helps us actually land. Um, I am finding myself spending quite a bit of time on the upfront um, as we're bringing folks in to, to really invest in that onboarding as you would in any staff or organizational capacity, um, any staff organizational um, scenario, but obviously things are just feel much, much more compressed um, given uh, the volume that is already quite high this early in the cycle and um, the thing that we're asking people to do, which is give a ton of their time um, to the thing that we're doing. Eliana, were you trying to unmute? Sorry, just want to make sure before I move on. <laughs> Sorry, I kept pressing it and it didn't work. <laughs> um, okay. Sorry. Um, yes, I was just going to reiterate and plus one, Sasha, it's important to have the coalition and the and the communities that are being impacted by the measure, you know, a part of the RFP process. Um, even if it's later in the game, maybe they can be a part of the contract process. But what we've seen work at BISC and at other campaigns is the coalition has a shared value agreement from the onset that helps them to, that helps guide their decisions on how, on who they hire. And um, everyone is agreed upon on the framework and the criteria. Um, for the consultants that are coming into their work. Um, so yeah, plus one to Sasha on that. Um, and so kind of building upon that once, actually, let's take a step back for in case there's anybody on <laughs> who's listening in, who's never run an RFP process before, can we just quickly touch on like some of the basics of that and what they should what is that process and um, how do you ensure that it is fair and equitable? We've touched on it a little bit, but let's just lay it out for folks real quick. Happy to, I'm happy to start out the, the process. Um, what we really like to advise at BISC is um, to establish an RFP process that um, entails ensuring that the coalition is actively seeking out BIPOC owned and led firms whenever feasible. We do understand that um, you know, some states may not have that option, but uh, we do recommend this just because like how Jess said, um, you're used to, you might be used to working with uh, potential consultants um, from past campaigns, but aren't, um, looking into other BIPOC owned that might be doing this work. 
Um, so that's where, um, you know, you establish that into your RFP process. Um, and we also recommend that it should be developed um, to actively involve and center directly impacted individuals um, at various stages. Um, and so you create that RFP process and within the campaigns MOU, you can establish um, a monetary threshold for projects that triggers the initiation of an RFP process. Um, so this really does help ensure that the campaign isn't solely relying on existing connections or famili familiarity um, and it provides that constructive feedback to firms that are not selected in the hiring hiring. Just to add to that, um, I think being really clear about what we're looking for, like what must be true um, and the extent to which we can be as explicit as possible in any request for proposals, I think has been important for us. Um, this was named earlier, but not every team is gonna have, even all of those must be true. And so it invites us to like, is this actually the thing that we need or are we open to folks that get us um, pretty close, but also offer these additional capacities, uh, whether it's their ownership structure, their reach in some key communities, big wins that they've secured that we can actually learn from because maybe we weren't part of those wins. Um, the flexibility there, um, something that's publicly available, available to folks um, uh, widely, uh, so a wide range of, of firms can engage and participate, um, explicit deadlines, and then some visibility into um, how decisions are being made. I thought that that was really important in our process. Kind of feels like people submit and then it like goes into a black hole. Um, mm -hmm. Before folks know, there's actually like a pretty diligent decision-making process that is moving. No, we might not have an answer for you right away. We are moving through our process. Also like building this campaign at the same time and some of the context may change. Um, and so that balance is really, really important. Um, and um, a thing that we've offered is feedback when folks haven't landed. Um, here was our experience of you. This is how you showed up. These are some things that you might keep in mind um, down the road. So trying to do that due diligence on our side. Um, all that is labor and time, but um, feels important still. And the other thing I would, I think there needs to be a little bit of a shifting of, I am always, I, I'm from the electoral side. I always wanna get to the win, right? That's always where I'm gonna be thinking, but defining success in different ways. And there's just more than one way to get there sometimes. And we're, you know, we kind of, we're taught a little bit in politics, this is the only way you do it. And that's not true. Um, and so seeing what firms can bring that might be different than what you're expecting to. And I think having some, like I always say this when I'm doing interviewing is that this isn't a gotcha experiment. Um, if, if you think of something at two in the morning that you really wish I would have asked or you would have said, please come back to me. And I think to Sasha's point too, this takes time. I thought we were gonna, I thought I was gonna do my mail firms um, process in November of this year, but no one opposed our language, which I was not expecting. So I had to just get get my butt in gear on signatures. That had to be, you know, I thought I was gonna have this lovely amount of time before we started collecting that we could do, I could interview everyone. Our priorities changed. Um, you know, we emailed everyone and just like, nope, we're moving slower than we thought. Thanks for, thanks for hanging out with us. Um, but I think it's also that having, having some of the space to do that is really important. Um, and just being able to think about like, you know, and also I like having set some set questions, but I also really like listening to what people say and digging in there, right? Where if you're just going to always ask, like, we all write down the questions, we all have that, but then you're not, it just sometimes feels like, you know, a square peg situation where I like to, I like to dig into what people are saying to me too. Mm -hmm. And, and really important thing to add and not forget is your, you know, what your projections for your, cons your vendor consultant budget is. Um, because if you don't add that in the RFP, then they, you know, they won't be able to pull the costs based on the size 
of your media market or your vocal. So by giving them that information as well, they can come <laughs> with a ballpark or projections on what you should be spending on each medium in your campaign um, if you want to saturate the market. Um, and it's and when you get the proposals back from consultants, um, things to really look out for is do they have the time and who's going to lead the work for you? And do they have an equity lens uh, written in the proposal? And how does it reflect that? Um, and some things that, you know, that we see as probably red flags is um, if a proposal is not tailored to your, your needs or your project and it's just not detailed enough, or you can see that the overall pricing is much higher or lower than other proposals you received, or there are line items you don't understand, um, or the consultant is not explicit about their capacity or who will be doing the work. Um, so it's important to just uh, read their proposal and make sure that they're meeting the criteria, your budget, your experience, the equity lens. Um, that you're looking for. And also you can check for references. And like Jess said, go back and ask more questions if need to, um, <clears throat> to really dig into, you know, what the real learning is here um, in the process. One of the th things that I have been really liking that I've seen lately is um, different consultants have been telling me that they don't have a college degree requirement anymore. And I've been hearing that more and more. And I'm like, that's awesome. Like, that wasn't even something that I would have necessarily thought to put in there. But I love that, that that's coming out more. And I think also the thing, too, is being aware that there are going to be some firms that are really great interviewers. They're just practice and know how to interview, right? So it's looking beyond, like beyond just the interview process, beyond, you know, looking at their, like their proposal, I actually generally find more helpful um, because that's something that even if they're nervous and nervous isn't bad, um, is something I've, I've come to the conclusion with, like, I want someone that's hungry for this, who's hungry on this issue and really wants to be a part of our team um, is something I've been looking at recently. And you know, one of the things I realized I got a lot of compliments early in my career is that I was very good at lowballing folks on salary. And I I was rewarded for it and like praised for how and then I stopped doing it. Um, and that's something like I've had to become aware of if not making this a game, right? It's something I've had to like step myself back on and you know, I will I will sometimes say, like, if someone's negotiating poorly for themselves, I'll call a timeout and tell them to figure it out and call me back. <laughs> um, and I've done that quite a few times that I'll just be like, we didn't have this conversation, timeout. I probably shouldn't be telling any of my bosses or funders this, but that is something, too, is that acknowledge that folks might be really good at the work but are not used to the business piece of our industry. I've had to learn it a lot and I, you know, I have had exposure for years, but it's still really hard. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, Jess, I think that's really important to think about, like for folks to think about like building in mentorship and coaching into all aspects of our work. I mean, it is, we all read about it all the time. We've experienced it. We've seen it with our friends and family. People burn out on this business all the time. Um, but to continue to win, we need to keep sustaining and investing in the our, in the talent. And so that's even just like a fairly simple thing to do, right? That really can help set folks up for success and also maintain folks in, the, in our movement um, and keeping that those that talent here and acknowledge when you can do that with your consultant team and when you can't do um i think sometimes i think you do need a i think you need a diversity of experience levels on your consultant team um you need the folks that have been doing the ballot measures for forever to but you also need some of the the folks that might be new to it too but i think it's a i think it's really figuring out a mixture of how to make it work and I also think it's 
it's being aware of what you have to do as a manager too, that like, what, where can you do it? And I think also it's, if someone's a, if a firm is a very good second place for you or runner up, it's also making sure you're connecting them with the other folks that, you know, maybe they need more experience with or not experience, but need to know more or, you know, being aware, I think on ballot measure, Sasha, I think you and I are going to be in the same position of, we're going to have our campaign work, but there's also going to be C3 work that happens. Mm. And I, I think that's a place to, to grow experience on the actual like lift of a ballot measure. So I think it's just being really intentional. That's totally true. There's huge capacity for us to also, with the exception of um, in not, uh, sorry, let me take a step back. Um, ensuring that we're appropriately um, supporting work that is happening on the C3 side in the appropriate way. The, mm -hmm. the lack of doing that will leave a lot of folks out who actually want to substantively um, engage in the way that they are allowed to. I'm sort of stating the obvious here. Um, and so, yes, in a very, very active conversation um, that we are having as to how we can structure a process whereby um, the real diversity of the folks that support this work, organizations, individuals, um, but can, who can do so and step in in the appropriate and compliant way um, will be a, a big focus and in the infrastructure that we need to make sure we're supporting um, to allow for that to happen. Thank you for the legal disclaimers on this. <laughs> yes, check with your lawyer. I just had a conversation about this today, so I was like, okay, this is how he yes. needs to say it. Um, I, I do also think giving people feedback when they do or do not get the job is important too, or the contract. Why? And sometimes it's hard. Sometimes, like if you get a hundred applicants for it, it's hard to go through everyone and just. But I think to the ones that you interview, giving that feedback can be helpful. Mm -hmm. So do you want to take this moment to plug for folks who are watching this um, that if you have questions that you'd like us like me to lift up, you can put those in the chat or the Q&A um, and so we make sure we can get get to those. Um, so with that, I do want to I mean, we've we've covered a lot of ground already in this conversation. Um, thank you all for that. Uh, but I do want to, as we are leaning towards wrapping up, we're not wrapping up yet, but as we're getting getting to that, I would love to hear from you about, as you've, from your experience working with folks, the RFP process or um, the building, the strategy, the implementation, like what are some of the best practices or things that you, in your experience, um, think went really well around your partnership with consultants and vendors or the hiring process? Um, and what lessons did you learn that you would avoid in the future? I always think the hiring process is going to be a lot quicker than I than it is. I always put in way less time for a call and then I want to know more and then I have to call someone back and it gets kind of awkward, um, especially, you know, we're hiring some for some poll, polling in the black community in Colorado and we had two great firms and it, w it was me and about 11 other groups on the call. I, my job was just to get it set up, make sure people were there and, you know, have some draft questions, but people just got way into it in a good way. And I wish I would have put in more time for it. So I think I, I would spend more time and on all of those hirings. The reality around timing feels so essential just to set our <laughs> expectations and then the broader coalitions. Um, I think supporting our consultants and vendors certainly you know folks are in relationship with me all the time but to actually create the space for folks to build with um members of our um our executive committee feels essential there are brilliant people who know new york really well and um have their own takes and have won and lost their own battles um in new york and that time to build um i think can pay off dividends for folks to spend a little bit of time on the front end to get to know folks, kind of understand where they are, where they're coming from, their organizational interest in participating and building the campaign in the way that they are. Um, I feel like a lot of my job is repetition to our 
coalition of the process that we are undertaking and just like reminding folks that we're not putting stuff in front of people in ways that are random or not well thought out, even if the content that you see is like the hyper shortened version of the decision, but reminding folks of the deep work that all of our consultants with the support of um, our coalition have done that have helped us to land. Um, the repetition of that process and also like really honoring that process feels really important. Um, it's hard work and it is um, uh, high stakes and to continue to like give it shine, rem remind folks where we started, where we came from. Uh, we brought in the smartest people in the business to do the job. And so um, let's take their recommendations, but also make sure that we can um, steer in ways that are appropriate to meet our needs and, and land on a win. I would also say check references early in the process. Hmm. Um, that might make a lot of decisions easier for you later on, especially if firms are looking very similar. <laughs> That's good. Just saying that after a certain point, like you have, oh, and give yourself time to refresh on each of the interviews. They, the folks that are interviewing with you deserve that, right? to review on each of them. And so they're not becoming a blog of like, who are all these folks? What, which one is which, right? So mm -hmm. give yourself time to debrief and yeah, take that time. Take it right after the call is my recommendation because you can easily forget what you liked about a firm or didn't like or, and then there's, yeah, being aware of that. Mm -hmm. And one thing I'm going to start doing is after a campaign, I'm just going to write my own notes up on the consultants that we worked with and put it in my file. So I have those notes readily available. Like mm -hmm. these are the things they did awesome. I should actually start it right now. Um, these are the awesome things that they did during, like they wrote, you know, 76 words in, in Colorado worked, our, wrote our messaging document along with our polling with GSG who's doing our polling. You know, that's not necessarily the role of a TV firm, but they know the messaging and we don't have any TV yet. So, and they wanted our folks to be on message. Yes, yes, taking that step, the initiative to make sure that, right? And being committed, as you were saying earlier, Jess, to the success of the campaign, mm -hmm. even if it's not like their specific lane that they were hired to do. If you don't ask, you don't get from consultants a lot of times is my experience. So I, I generally ask, like even on like ballot book, book, publicity pamphlets, blue books, whatever they're called in your state, you know, that's a place like we're starting in Colorado, but we're having, you know, we're going to have our consultants look at it. These are the places we can make difference. These are where we cannot. Um, in Arizona, there's weird rules. I know you, everyone's shocked that there's weird rules in Arizona, but mm -hmm. one of the rules in Arizona is that you can send in as many arguments as you want at $75 a pop. And so I always spent a lot of time like working on the story arc of it because reporters use the public, the official documents. They're used by voters. They're used by rep like just how reporters just copy and paste what's in the blue book or the publicity pamphlet or whatever it's called is amazing to me. And it's something that I, you know, I, I, I definitely would, I'm going to be hopping on the call with my consultants in a little bit and that's going to be a subject today. Mm-hmm because I'm a little obsessed with it. <laughs> <laughs> it looks official, people read it. Yeah, that's I mean, cool. that's, yeah. Oh, sorry, Eliana, go ahead. No, I was agreeing, that's so real, for sure, Jess. <laughs> um, yeah, and just so folks know, you may not be able to influence that in every state, but where you can, it is a great approach. Great approach. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to lift up another approach that you could possibly use if your budget is not there for a consultant or vendor. Um, you know, this may not be possible for all states, but many states that are ballot measure states have multiple progressive measures running at the same time. So an, an approach you can take is to collaborate with the other campaigns on the ballot or they're or working towards the ballot. 
um, and create an RFP together, joint RFP and uh, split the cost uh, with the other campaigns that are in your state as well. Um, if, you know, money can come late or you may not have the money now, it depends, but that can also be an approach if possible. Um, as well as Jess had mentioned at the beginning, the vendors can uh, collaborate and, and joint uh, propose as well. Um, but I want to take the time to plug two BISC resources <laughs> that you can use to help you guide uh, you through this process and through many aspects of the ballot measure process. The first is our Declaration of Equity and Accountability. Um, it's listed in my speaker uh, links, um, but you can access that through there. And it's essentially a guide of the 12 components of the ballot measure campaign, including vendor and consultant hiring, where you can, um, where it shows you how you can do this equitably in every aspect of a ballot measure campaign with the principles and practices. And then there's also examples from past campaigns on how they operationalized um, these components equitably. And we also have a vendor and consultant database um, that we try to update every year, um, every cycle with the vendors and consultants that work um, in the ballot measure space. Um, and we have we can have that available for you if you reach out um, to me with uh, my email is also in the speaker profile. So um, those are two resources that resources that we have available for you to use um, if you're looking to operationalize this equitably. Yeah, and a plug if there's folks that you're working with that you really like to send that to BISC so we can add them to the database so they can continue to get more work. <laughs> Yes. Cool. Well, we are just about at time. And so, you know, in these last few minutes, would love to hear from each of you. Like, is there anything I didn't ask about that you want to make sure that we lift up and that uh, folks get to hear? I think one thing is reflect on what you did before and always see how you can do it better like you might we get caught up on our own biases all the time and I think it's important to acknowledge like oh I did it this way before I probably wouldn't do it again that way and that's a that's growth yeah um I think the second that you are sensing tensions problems before they start to fester to address them head on. The pace at which we're working is extremely fast. If mm -hmm. things feel complex now, guess what? <laughs> They're only gonna get more challenging. Being able to intervene really quickly, setting expectations, um, naming for whomever, your team, your coalition, your vendors, like I'm experiencing you showing up in this way, this is not gonna work, let's course correct now. Obviously like creating the space for feedback is essential, but um, I'm learning that pretty quickly and um, feels so important for us to then move with also like we can give each other feedback let's like create the culture of that where that can be true um so that we can proceed with clarity and understanding and um know that we've course corrected and really have set a tone for um putting our best foot forward and meeting our shared expectations but the second that we're starting to feel like things are getting a little rocky, like step in, stepping in um, clearly and courageously and um, making some interventions now at this early stage, allegedly, we're still early, um, feels really, really important. And I would just say, get a pal that's running another state's ballot measure that you can call on things. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's really important. Yes, the connections, the you know, you can both complain to each other about your consultants or not complain and see how great they're doing. And so I just can't stress the importance of the, to be intentional in your hiring process to really ensure your campaign success and really to, you know, as a coalition, transparency in the hiring process is also paramount um, to bring your coalition along um, as you're making these decisions. And it's really just, you know, consider the power, the money, 
the time allocated to consultants and vendors. Um, and you can evaluate, you know, which communities' experiences and voices are being centered together, but um, it's all, always important to be intentional at the outset um, instead of, you know, uh, waiting till down the line where things could get muddy or um, not go well for you at the campaign. Well, I can't wait to see y'all in Vegas. Yes. 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 In a month. Yeah, this so, better be the coolest um, panel, by the way, in Vegas. <laughs> I'm going to get real competitive with the other panels, Sasha and I will. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be great. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, we did mention this at the in the very kickoff session um, that you know Fisk is hosting our own conference, the Road Ahead in Vegas, April 9th through 11th. All of these amazing panelists plus me, the moderator, will be there. So um, opportunity to continue these conversations and, and we hope folks uh, can join us there. Um, and just thank you so much to all three of you for bringing your expertise and your commitment to, you know, the growth and learning of our movement. Um, it's It could be really easy to have all these experiences and sit on them and keep them for yourself and just continue to like bank that. Um, but to be able to share it um, with other folks who are looking to engage in this work is so important. You know, we're all stronger when we're stronger together. We, you know, learning the best practices, but also the things that didn't work. We don't need to reinvent the wheel. We don't need to repeat the same mistakes, right? Like let's all learn together. So just a huge appreciation for sharing your experiences and your expertise um, today and throughout all of today, um, all of these panels. Thank you to Thank you, everyone. Thank you everyone. Bye. Bye, Bye. all. Bye-bye.